Welcome to the video. My name is Sean Sparks. I'm a technology specialist with Microsoft CRM. Today we're going to show you how you can easily perform data imports into your Microsoft CRM trial. For this video, I'm going to focus on the easiest way to get the data into your trial, and that is the data templates. You can get to your data templates by clicking into Settings, Data Management, and this Templates for Data Import. In this case, I'm going to focus on the account and the contact. So let's go ahead and export the, download rather, the template for the account. And I'm going to do a save as. Hit and save. I'm also going to do the contact. Let's do the same thing. And now I can close that window. One of the first things I want to point out is that when you first download these templates, uh, you can you can get a warning or an error message when you open them up that can be a little alarming and is not very instructive under what the actual error is. So if I go ahead and illustrate that by double clicking on the account entity here, you get this error message here. The file is corrupt and cannot be opened. So let's take a look at what the error really is. When I come in and look at the file and I go ahead and hit properties, you'll see that there's this little area right down here. And that says that this file came from another computer and might be blocked in order to help protect this computer. All that really has to happen here is you hit unblock on it and say OK. In this case, I'm actually going to do the same thing for the contacts while I'm here. Now when you open them, they open up just fine. Let me start off by showing some of what I really like about the data templates. Once they're in here, you get, uh, you get columns across the top that are all of the columns that are uh, applicable for that entity. At least they can have data imported against them. You get the, uh, when you go ahead and click on the various headings, you get the name of the, of the field, as well as a description of what it's used for. Uh, when you go ahead and click into the actual data rows, it'll tell you, in this case, if you notice, it's kind of subtle, but if you go ahead and look at it, you'll see that uh, this is a mandatory field, and you'll notice that the, the heading is bold. You can also get the, the any kind of data restrictions around it. In this case, this is 160 characters, and it's of type text. Uh, this one is uh, as a lookup type, which means that it's going to try and, and gather the data from somewhere else in the system. Uh, and you can see that it provides this data across the way. Another thing to notice is if you click on one of the columns uh, that has a uh, an option set, when you go ahead and, and click on it, you can actually get all of the option set values right here. Now, in the interest of saving some time, I'm going to go ahead and show you an, a version of this that I've already completed. So let's uh, let's go ahead and switch over to that one. Okay, now we can take a look at the versions that I have completed. Let's go ahead and open up account. And let's go ahead and look at contact as well. So I have these two files, and uh, they have a bunch of data filled out for me already. Uh, one thing you'll notice that I've done is any columns that I know that I'm not going to have any data in, I've gone ahead and, and deleted them it's just by selecting that column and hitting delete. Uh, this reduces the their potential for error as you do the imports. Since we're doing both contacts and accounts, and both of these entities have references to each other, is in a uh, contact can have be associated with a account in the form of the parent customer. Also, from the account side, uh, you can have uh, you can have the primary contact. And the way we're going to accomplish this is we're going to um, put the the referencing field in here. And in the case of the uh, contact is really very straightforward. You'll notice that it's here's the account name that I have on the actual account uh, and it's a simple name. When I go over and look at the uh, the contact record and I look at the parent customer, you'll notice that these line up nicely with those. Now it gets a little bit trickier when you go to look at the contact in that you know the the way that the the matching field is done by default for a contact the way that these things match up is you get a, a combination of first name and last name to get the full name. Uh, there is no column in the Denda templates for full names. So I made one up. Uh, and then if I go to look at the um, account records, you can see this is what I was talking about here, right? So I have, it's a lookup field, and I'm looking at, um, you know, the, the first name, last name combinations for the various users. Another thing we highly recommend is as you're going through, 
and you're going through all your records this way, it's a very good time to go ahead and clean up all your data. Uh, you might as well get all that out of the way before you get into your system uh, so you can have clean data from the start. Now I mentioned before that we'll be doing these uh, both of these entity imports together and we're doing that so we can have the the relationships tied together appropriately when they go in. We do this by having separate files for both the account and the contact. Uh, as we, you know, as you can see here, one of the things we can do is we can easily highlight these two and send it to a compressed folder. It'll go ahead and do that. In my, in my case, let me just go ahead and call this my data import. From there, we come over to back to our CRM instance, and we can say import data. Click import data. It's going to ask me to upload the file. I have my my data import zip that I just created. I go ahead and hit next. It'll go ahead and upload it. You'll see that it has loaded the loaded the zip file and separated it into its constituent parts. I hit next. And I'm just going to go for the default uh, automatic mappings. The, since we downloaded the templates, it has all of the column headings that are appropriate for the various types. And it makes it for a real straightforward import. I click Next. It's telling me that the, uh, all the mappings have happened appropriately because I have these green check marks here. If I wanted to and if I, if I needed to, I could go over and do the mappings, but we'll reserve that for a, a later video. In this case, I'm going to hit Next. Uh, I'm going to specify uh, an, in, an owner for the imported records. In this case, it's just myself. I click Submit. And it's telling me, congratulations, data has been in, submitted for import. Now we can easily go in here and click on the Imports view to kind of keep tabs on what's happening here. Uh, in this case, both, uh, both of my imports are starting with, and this is them right here at the top, uh, both of them are currently in the submitted status. Let me go ahead and refresh. See now it's moved over to parsing and transforming. You can see that now my uh, account import has gone to importing and now they're all set for completed. So now that that's done, let me go ahead and switch views here. I can close this. And if we come back over to Workplace and Accounts, now that we're in the Accounts view, I can go over and take a look at some of my records. In this case, I'm going to go look at my Coho Vineyard and Winery. Now that I'm on the Coho Vineyard and, and Winery record, I can look at some of the data and I can see that I have all the phone information. I have my primary contact right here. Uh, if I scroll down, in this case, I for this I picked this record deliberately. Uh, I can see that I have a couple active contacts for this for this uh, record. And once I click into this record, you can see that I have uh, Coho Winery. In this case, I've gone from the con to the contact. I have all of the address information and the fact that it is uh, again associated with the appropriate record. So that was a, a quick walkthrough of how you can use the data templates to perform imports very quickly and easily uh, and not have too much exposure and, and having to be very specific around some of the mappings. In a later video I will show how you can use the, the mapping tool uh, to have quite a bit of control over how these imports actually happen as well as doing things like uh, custom fields on the entity and uh, perhaps even custom entities themselves. Thank you, and I hope you found this video very informative, and uh, we look forward to providing some more.